I'm Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. There are two types of narcissists, the stingy and mean, and those who are compulsive givers. Most narcissists feel abused and exploited when they have to pay money in order to satisfy the needs and wishes of their so-called nearest and dearest. But the compulsive givers are different. To all appearances, the compulsive giver is an altruistic, empathic, and caring person. But in reality, he or she is a people pleaser and a codependent. The compulsive giver is trapped in a narrative of his own confabulation. He tells himself that his nearest and dearest need him because they are poor, or inexperienced, young, or lacking in intelligence and good looks. In other words, he tells himself that the recipients of his handouts are inferior to him. And in this sense, compulsive giving is a kind, a variant of pathological narcissism where the giver feels superior. In reality, it is the compulsive giver who coerces, cajoles, and tempts people around him to avail themselves of his services or his money. He forces himself on the recipients of his ostentatious largesse. He forces the beneficiaries of his generosity and magnanimity to play the role. He is unable to deny anyone their wishes or requests, even when these are not explicit or expressed, and are the mere figments of his own neediness and grandiose imagination. Inevitably, such a person, the compulsive giver, develops unrealistic expectations. He feels that people should be immensely grateful to him, and that their gratitude should, should translate into a kind of obsequiousness. Internally, the compulsive giver rages against the lack of reciprocity he perceives in his relationships with family, friends, and colleagues. He mutely castigates everyone around him for being so ungenerous and so ungrateful. To the compulsive giver, giving is perceived as a sacrifice, and taking is always a form of exploitation. Thus, the compulsive giver gives without grace, always with visible strings attached. No wonder he is frustrated and often aggressive. In psychological, in psychological jargon, we would say that the compulsive giver has alloplastic defenses with an external locus of control. This simply means that the compulsive giver relies on input from people around him to regulate his fluctuating sense of self-worth, his precarious self-esteem, and his ever-shifting moods. It also means that he blames the world for his failures. The compulsive giver feels imprisoned in a hostile and mystifying universe, entirely unable to influence events, circumstances, and outcomes. The compulsive giver thus avoids assuming responsibility for the consequences of his actions. Yet it is important to realize that the compulsive giver cherishes and relishes his self-conferred victimhood and he nurtures his grudges by maintaining a meticulous accounting of everything he gives and everything he receives. It's a kind of a psychological ledger. This mental operation of masochistic bookkeeping is a background process of which compulsive givers are sometimes completely unaware. The compulsive giver is unlikely, is likely to vehemently deny such meanness and narrow-mindedness. He is an artist of projective identification. The compulsive giver manipulates his closest into behaving exactly the way he expects them to. He keeps lying to them and telling them that the act of giving is the only reward that he seeks. All the while, he secret, secretly yearns for reciprocity. He rejects any attempt to rob him of his sacrificial status. And so, he won't accept gifts or money and he avoids being the recipient or beneficiary of help or even compliments. This, fa this false asceticism and fake modesty are mere baits. He uses them to prove to himself that his nearest and dearest are nasty ingrates. He says, had they wanted to give me a present or to help me, they would have insisted on it. They would have ignored my protestations. He, his worst fears and suspicions are thus confirmed yet again. And gradually, people get tired and exhausted by his behavior, and they fall into line. They begin to feel that they are the ones who are doing the compulsive giver a favor, 
by succumbing to his endless and overweening charity. What can we do, they say? It means so much to him, and he has put so much effort into it. it I just couldn't say no. I had to take what was on offer. The roles are thus reversed, and everyone is happy. The beneficiaries benefit, and the compulsive giver goes on feeling that the world is unjust, that people are self-centered exploiters. He always suspected that to be the truth, and their behavior confirms it once and for all.